This is our Canvas homepage. In this tutorial, we will learn how to navigate around it and find what's important here. We'll also look at the syllabus itself at, in detail and at, at length. Uh, just before we start, this this kind of purplish bar at the bottom, you will not see that. Uh, that's, you know, my, my homepage looks a little bit different than yours. This is what's called the student view. I'll actually go back to my page to show you some other things. So you'll see what I'm talking about, but you won't have this purple bar at the bottom. That's just telling me as an instructor that what I'm looking at is the student view. If I want to go in and, and change something in an assignment, I have to go to my view, okay? Okay, so homepage 50282 is the CRN number of our class, class record number We Are History 101, summer session 2022. My name is Frank Turner. Um, I'm not going to go over this word for word. I want, I, I expect you to do that, especially with the syllabus. I'm going to go over it, over it briefly here to hit the main points, but it's important that, that, that all of you go over this, you know, in, in detail, word for word. Uh, okay, so here's the syllabus link. Uh, so anytime you want to find the syllabus, simply come to the home page, and there it is. Uh, just click on that, and like I said, we'll look at that in, at, uh, at length here in a minute. We're an online class, also fast track, so a 16-week course condensed into eight weeks. So the, the, the course is brisk, goes by very quickly. After two weeks of instruction in this class, it's the same as one month in a 16-week course. So understand that we're a double time, so you don't want to get too far behind. Uh, my email is right here. If you have any questions uh, before the class begins or during, that's fine. Let me know. Our first day is June 27th through August 20th. Okay, there's four places on the home page that you need to, need to know about. First one is modules. I'm going to put that aside for a minute. That's over here on the left menu. I'm going to go over that in a minute. Let's let's look at the other three first. So course summary is at the bottom of the home page. You see it right here. And what you have here is a chronological list of all the important dates of this class. First day of class, instructions post today, quizzes is due, drop deadline, uh, all the way through to the end of the class, last day of class. So a, a very quick view for you to see what's going on is come to the course summary. Um, it's all here for you. But probably what students use the most, and if you've been a, you know, a student for a while, you know this, is the to-do list on the right side of your page. Now they're kind of coming at you as they're due and, and, or, or as that date's coming up to, to remind you. So I would say anytime you open your, your, the, the home page of this class, take a look at the to-do list and make sure that you're not missing anything, okay? Very, very important. Okay, um, the other is the calendar. So like the course summary I mentioned is a chronological list of the important dates. The calendar is just the same, same dates, same same um, you know events just in a calendar view okay uh, so make sure that you you click the right class We've only got one here so we're good uh, let's move to the okay so here you go now now all the all the dates are filling in if you want to look at a calendar for this class you can see all the important you know events and due dates and so on that are happening if you got more than one class it will show up here also. If you click two classes at one time, or three, or even four, or five, I suppose, if during the regular semesters, they'll all show up on this calendar, and they'll all be color coded. So you can look at your calendar for one class, two classes, or five classes, depending on how many you have. Uh, of course, it gets complicated, but you'll be able to see what you have for all your classes each day. Okay. So this this goes through in our case just through August when the class when the class ends last day of class is August twentieth okay okay let's go back to our course page here okay so so the course summary to do list and the calendar okay very important that you are on top of that now let's look at the modules so the modules is very important found here on the left the modules is the brain center of the class it's where all the weekly work for you is found if you want to know what you have to do that week go to modules and go to this to the specific week that we're in and it will tell you so as you open modules um, i need to go to my view now because i haven't put anything in here yet there we go uh, you won't see it like this. Okay, we're, we're in my view now. You, if you opened it right now, it would be empty. It would say weekly schedules. And then when week one, when I publish week one, it'll show. And then week one will stay there. Then week two, week three, until finally at the end of the class, we, we've only got eight weeks here 
okay so they'll all they'll all show up uh, I'm going to show you this just to give you an example of what you're going to be seeing but understand that, that, that these modules are from the class that I ended in spring uh, that was a 16-week class so it's a little bit different but the formats the same I'm not so concerned about you seeing what the actual details are here but just the format because yours is going to be a little bit different uh, I haven't posted I haven't uh, posted or published it yet so so week one for any class is always going to be an introductory week partly but at the top here every module we have for each week is going to look the same week one week two week three you'll have the date here of course you see the dates back in January this is from my last class welcome to week one I will I will post a welcome video each week not very long three to you know five seven minutes maybe somewhere nine ten minutes not very long to just kind of talk to you you can see me I'm a real person not a robot uh, th there's always things happening I'm, I'm giving you responses to film reflections and discussion boards grading and 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 so on so please don't skip these these, these, these this is one of the ways I can talk to you and you know uh, express myself to you who can see me uh, every week uh, the it, it'll say this week and what are we doing this week in this case introductions class management yours will be a little bit different uh, we have two classes per week you'll have four uh, class one through class four for you so everything is double okay but again we're just we're looking at this as an example so for week one intro um, how I run a class why history is important this is just kind of an overview of a typical class this is kind of a uh, way for you to hear a lecture of mine and get a feel for who I am as an instructor as a speaker and decide if that's what you, what you want to do if you want to you have that experience again <laughs> okay uh, class two syllabus canvas management I'm recording that right now so that's what we're doing right now but very important it'll be the same for for your class assignment instructions will be found in class two of modules week one this is very important you can always refer to this throughout the class you have a question about an assignment you can always come here to find the instructions and, and what the requirements are. Uh, so we have four assignments. Uh, let's from the top. What is a chapter quiz, written instructions, and a video tutorial of me going over the instructions. What is the film reflection? Same thing, written instructions and a video tutorial. What is a discussion board? Written tutorial. What's a supplemental lecture? Same thing, written and tutorial. Okay. So uh, understand that assignment instructions is always here for you to, to come back to refer to. Modules week one, class two, just scroll down to assignment instructions and there it is. So if you ever have any questions about it, uh, come here to, um, to find out. Um, okay. Now in, in your case, uh, because it's a fast track class, it, it's not going to end here. You're, you're going to have a class three and class four. Of course, any other, in, any other information that I have to give you, this is the first week, you'll have a very similar you know situation here I'm telling you about quizzes and be aware and and four places to find this in information and so on so that will be similar but you see here it ends but for you you'll have class three and class four okay uh, so understand everything's double time now I'm gonna go to another a different module uh, just kind of a random one here Let's pick week four for fun just to show you what a typical week that's not an intro week looks like because because once once you're excuse me guys once you're um, once once you're past the intro stuff, the second week, or in your case, the second half of the first week, because we're fast track, uh, it's it's coursework, it's chapter work. So a typical class, again, a typical module, again, will have week what week we're in, the date, uh, the welcome video, uh, what we're doing that week, and then you go right into class one. So typically, there's gonna, there's always going to be a lecture video at the top. Sometimes I'll have a film before it. If if so, it, it'll it'll tell you. You you want to follow the numbers in chronological order. So in this case, there's only one video to watch, and that's the typical lecture video. Uh, below that, it'll say films for class one. So here you see a number of films here that you uh, are watching for class one. Does that mean you watch them whenever you want? No. What you do is listen to the video lecture, and while I'm giving the lecture I'll stop and say let's take a break here and watch the film entitled the natives and the English please watch that film so you, you just simply pause the the lecture video and you watch the film then you come back I talk for however many more minutes and we go to the next film so you don't watch the films on your own you watch the films when I prompt you to in the video lecture okay 
and all the way through uh, class two continues part two chapter three um, but you know again understand that your class will have class three and class four as it's double time okay okay so let's see here. let's go back to our home page and see if we've covered everything I think that we did uh, okay actually announcements I've already posted some you know I post the class early I posted something about Juneteenth what that is office hours we had office hours last week we have them every week Wednesday between noon and 2 p.m. I have zoom office hours just simply drop in I post the link every Wednesday morning uh, that link works for the entirety of the class but I post it anyway as a reminder okay um, assignments I'm going to keep it in my view to start it just so you can see the difference you can see how they're segregated this way uh, four different types of um, uh, assignments chapter quizzes 1 through 1 through 15 um, they're due every week every Sunday night film reflections there's four of them two before the midterm two before the final do every other week discussion boards same as the as the film reflections four two before the midterm two before the final the, these come in rapid succession in a in a um, fast track class in a in a regular class we get a week off between each one but we don't have the time here so so while while you're finishing up a, a film reflection the discussion board for the next assignment has already posted so they overlap each other a little bit so understand that it's 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 very it moves along quickly and of course midterms and final exam so th this is this is these are all the assignments supplemental lectures aren't posted here because they're not really an assignment a supplemental lecture will become part of your midterm and final exams the essay portion and please go to the supplemental lecture instructions and assignment instructions to understand how that works okay uh, let me show you your view of um, assignments just so you see the difference and again they're going to come to you they're going to show up as they're due so quiz film quiz quiz discussion board quiz quiz not segregated like mine are so your, yours, yours is a little bit of a different view okay so these are all the assignments from top to bottom for this entire class all right okay um, let me go back to oh, let's see let's go ahead and go we, we can do that discussions um, these are the four discussion boards that you will be doing as assignments but you can you can access them through assignments also okay uh, grades um, I'm not going to open the grades because it'll show everybody else in the class just for privacy but anytime you want to check your grades that's where you go and I would suggest you check them you know uh, uh, many times so, you, so you, you're sure that everything's going okay uh, people same thing you can reach out to anybody in the class uh, through people and then of course all the rest of these are just kind of uh, resources for you you know if you'd like to uh, you know talk about financial aid librarian uh, whatever it might be okay okay let's go back to our home page here okay so I think we got everything covered home we cover announcements modules assignments discussion grades people okay so let's look at the syllabus right here always on the home page just click on that and it'll open let's maximize it okay so again I'm not going to go over every word but I'm going to hit the main points here so again we are 101 50282 online my name is Frank Turner uh, important right here zoom zoom hours uh, zoom office hours uh, if you can't make the 12 to 2 time we, we can talk about let me know we'll set up a private time and yes I've done 11 at night and 6 in the morning if that's all you can do uh, please read this course description so you know what you're getting into or what we're learning I'm gonna read the last two just so you get a kind of a better idea of who I am of what my background is the course will, will pay special attention to the interaction between the races that were involved in the story and the conflicts the story is not one-sided and special attention will be given to include the histories of African Americans Native Americans Mexican Americans Asian Americans LGBT and women uh, my background is in the study of racism and discrimination as well as the history of civil rights and social justice my lectures and presentations will be given from this point of view so the lectures and the presentations will have that as the for lack of a better word flavor okay went a little bit too far here student learning outcomes very important that you understand what these are this is what the 
you know, what the campus itself expects me to, to teach to you, uh, you kind of overall. Um, so when you get out of this class, you'll, you'll be able to, to do these, these four things. Uh, so please, please read uh, this in its entirety. Okay, next is the textbook. Very important and important you get it early. Uh, this is an older book. This is not a brand new, uh, you know, edition. And I, I do that for a reason. This is probably five or six years old. Maybe we yeah, have five or six years old. Um, I do that for a reason to keep it cheap. Uh, textbooks are ridiculously expensive, and it's, it's hard for me to imagine that that we would expect students to pay that much money for a textbook. Um, so if I keep it, uh, if we keep a a later edition. Um, or I should say an earlier edition, they're cheaper, okay? Uh, what I would suggest you do, of course, it's available in the library, but the library is very expensive. What I would suggest you do is, is copy that number right there. Okay, just copy that and Google that, and that will you'll come up with all different types of places to, to, to find this book. Uh, please be, be certain that you don't buy a book that says sources or value on it. it it'll say it like right there, like, like a little inset box right there. Or sometimes it's it's at the at the top of the of the book. Make sure that it doesn't say sources or value anywhere. That's the wrong book. Even though this ISBN will take you there, it's the wrong book. You want the main textbook, okay? Uh, so you can you can go to the campus bookstore. Five zero two eight two is our CRN number. But again, very expensive. So look for other sources to find to save yourself some money. You can rent it through at Amazon Chegg. Chegg.com, you can purchase it through eBay, half.com. There's lots of online places that, you know, markets and uh, Facebook's got one. Uh, you can look on Craigslist and find a local person that finished this class recently and has a book. Uh, so please uh, do, do your, your due diligence and, and try to find a, a reasonably priced textbook, okay? I, I know that you can, if you can find them, you can rent them for as little as 20 something dollars or maybe even less. Okay, attendance, of course, an online class, so there's no real attendance requirement, but it, a lack of engagement with the materials or failure to turn in assignments can result in you being dropped. Uh, after the first week, uh, it's, your, it's your responsibility to drop the class, so you know I'm not going to drop people after that, okay? So it's your responsibility. Um, there's two deadlines, July 7th. You, you can drop it without anything being entered on your transcripts. July 24th, you'll get a W. Understand that a W is better than an F or a D, or in some cases a C. You know, if you want to go to a prestigious university to go to grad school someday, you don't want to have a lot of C's on your on your um, transcripts. Um, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you can't do it, but you want to minimize them as much as you can. Same with W's. W's mean that you with, with you withdrew from a class. Doesn't count towards your GPA, but it's on your transcripts. So of course, if you are trying to transfer to a you know university and, and you have ten W's in a two year period or whatever it might be, the the universe is going to question your ability to finish anything. You, you keep on withdrawing. So keep these two a minimum. But if something happens, you're just not making it in this class or any other class, uh, or you get a job or you just you just decide you don't want to be in school anymore. Uh, I, I, I get it. I've been there. Uh, but but drop the class before you do that, because in, in my past, I didn't do that. And when I came back later as a serious student, I had all these F's, W's, INC's and all kinds of stuff happening. So uh, <clears throat> you may not think that you'll ever come back to school, but you'd be surprised how life will take you in different directions. So just just for your own good, drop the class if you don't intend to finish it. Um, Students who remain enrolled in the class will receive a grade. Okay, so understand that if you if you leave after week week three and you don't drop and you don't turn anything in week four through eight, you're going to probably end up with an F. So you don't want that. Uh, it's your responsibility to drop the class as you're no longer attending. Uh, please read how to be prepared for the class. Okay, this is the important part here. What are the assignments? So. Please read these. Uh, most importantly, as you see at the bottom of each of these, I, I say please refer to the assignment instructions. Each one of these will say that. Uh, uh, assignment instructions is what I mentioned earlier. Modules, week one, scroll, scroll down to class two, and there they are. They're all there. But briefly, each week we'll do a 10-question quiz. 
on the chapter or in this case the chapters because there's never a time except for I think week one where we only have one chapter uh, we have two and sometimes three okay so if that's the case you'll have two or three ten question quizzes but they're open book open notes no time limit okay uh, for film reflection throughout the semester to gain your sense of interpretation of the media and the representations of history uh, again, refer to the assignment instructions and, and to, to get all the details there. Uh, for discussion boards, and discussion boards are based on your interpretation of primary documents. So a discussion board, you'll read a primary document and then you'll post about it. You'll also post it to other students. Supplemental lectures, uh, please spend time with this um, in the instructions because this is not difficult or complicated, but different than perhaps what you've had before. Uh, there'll be 16 supplemental lectures, eight before the midterm, eight before the final. These are lectures that are separate from the main lectures, although I'll give them to you in the main lecture, but they're given randomly, not in the schedule. So we'll be taking a, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll be listening to, you'll be listening to a, a lecture, and I'll say, okay, let's stop here and do supplemental lecture number three, and it's entitled The, the, the Clash of the, of the Cultures. And... Uh, from that point, what I'm telling you is now this, this supplemental lecture from start to finish is separate. You should take copious notes during those lectures and keep them separate, I would suggest, because you can use the notes. I'll also give you an outline in the, in the presentation. You can, you can copy that, print that. You can use that also. Uh, so you can use your outlines and your notes to write these essays. But understand that, but, that when I give a supplemental lecture, what I'm asking you to do on, on your essay and again, for details, go to assignment instructions and listen to the supplemental lecture information. But just, just quickly, I'm asking you to review the lecture. Write a review of the lecture. So that means you wouldn't go to an outside source and find information. You're not going to go to the Internet to add to it. If I didn't say it, it shouldn't be in your essay. Okay, so where, where students go wrong here, they try to add to it or they simply just, you know, uh, uh, Google the, the subject and cut and paste information. I want you to write a review of what I said. So what I should be reading in your essays is, is, is what I told you in the lecture itself, okay? Uh, so again, make sure you understand supplemental lectures. I'm, I'm available to talk to you about it in detail anytime you'd like, let me know. Uh, we, have, we have a midterm and a final, uh, same, same format for both. Both have part one, part two. Part one is 40 multiple choice questions that you'll have 40 minutes to complete. That's more than enough in a typical face-to-face -face class. Uh, the 40 question multiple choice portion is done in 20 to 30 minutes. So 40 is plenty. Uh, part two of the essay questions, you'll have, you'll have 85 minutes for that. That is the length of a typical class. Uh, the 40 questions will be from your textbook and class notes. The three essay questions will be from your supplemental lectures, as I mentioned before. Okay. Uh, the final exam will not be comprehensive the entire course. It will cover the second half of the course only. So you don't have to worry about the first half once we get past it. Uh, grading, pretty straightforward. 625 points for the class, point system. Uh, 10 points for 15 quizzes each for 150. Uh, four reflections at 25 points. Four discussion boards at 25 points. Midterm, 120. Final, 155. I'll explain why there's more points for the final in a minute. Uh, you add all those up, that's 625. I grade in a typical percentage uh, uh, basis. Uh, if, you, if you end the class with an 89.6, I will, I will round it up to, a, uh, to, an, to, to the next grade, in that case an A. Uh, I mentioned before about grades. Make sure that you are on top of that, and that you regularly check your point record. Any disputes, let me know right away. You know, Don't tell me week eight that my quiz for chapter one, I should have got nine points on eight. Then tell me right away, okay? Extra credit, credit late work. So I don't offer extra credit. So I mentioned before how the final exam had 35 extra points in it. Uh, I, I grade the final exam using the same point system as the midterm exam, but there are 35 extra points on the final exam. These are a bonus for anyone who completes the class. So that is probably more, more extra credit points than most professors offer that offer extra credits. So that, that's just how I do that. I, I don't, you know, I've, I've, I've done an extra credit in the past. I just get inundated and it, it creates almost a whole other job for, for me and it's complicated to keep up with it. So that, that's kind of where, where I've fallen there, okay? I don't accept any late assignments. Um, 
uh, and, and, and unless, of course, you've you've discussed it with me, we've, we've made arrangements. I, I realize things happen, but typically, you know, I'm sorry, I forgot because I was working. I, I, I no, I can't can't do that. So so what I've done here is I've I've I'm giving you a lot of time to complete these chapter quizzes are available 10 days before they're due, 10 full days, including two weekends. Film reflections, discussion boards are available 11 days before they are due. Uh, the only exceptions to this are the first and last weeks due to our compressed schedule. So be aware of the schedule. So, you know, in a typical 16 week class, I don't I don't post an assignment on day one, but I, don't, I have to here. So the first film reflection, you've only got eight full days. Uh, and then the last week, same thing. We're running out of time, but our last discussion board is there. Our last chapter quiz, I, I move those up a little bit so you have time to uh, you know, properly take and not be stressed out when you take the final exam. Okay, uh, so there, there really is no excuse to not finish an assignment in that given time. My suggestion is always, and I mean, this is something that I learned the hard way in my life, and I see students do it all the time. You know, students tend to wait till the last day to do an assignment. And my suggestion is do it early in the week. If you did it on Monday or Tuesday and worked hard through Thursday, you can take a three-day weekend. But, but typically people don't do that. Uh, so my, my, my perspective is that this works great for me. Again, not all my life because I was, I was that way when I was young. But um, take, take the hardest thing you have in all your classes, what's the most challenging assignment? Do that right away on Monday uh, and get that done. Then do the next hardest, the next hardest. And so by Wednesday, Thursday, you're doing the easy stuff. And by Thursday afternoon, you're finished and you're done and you have a weekend to yourself. So that's, that's what I always suggest. It's a great tool to learn uh, to use in life. I do it with everything I do. And I manage myself pretty well. So late assignments of any time, any type will not be accepted. No exceptions. If you have any conflicts, whether the problems with your grades, you don't you don't agree with them, you don't agree with how something was graded, or you have an issue with me for some reason, whatever it might be, please understand that these things happen, and it's not like you're gonna you know um, hurt my feelings, or I'm certainly not trying to hurt yours. But if there is a conflict between us, please follow these steps. Talk to me first to attempt to remedy the issue. We can sit down, and again, I, I, I'm you know I'm I'm an easy person to get along with, and I'm on your side. So I will explain to you my point of view, and typically come to some sort of compromise agreement. I've never had a student have to go to step two yet. Of course, you, there's always the first time, right? If 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 we can't figure it out between the two of us, I will then give you instructions, uh, contact information from the department chair. You will talk to him, same type of thing. He's a great guy, easygoing guy also. Uh, if you can't solve it through him, he will then give you contact information for the dean of the department, and that's, that, that's the top, okay? So between the three of those, we'll figure it out some way, somehow. Uh, honesty, plagiarism, you know, cheating uh, is a big deal. Plagiarism, dis disruptions of instructional activity, fraud, lying, you know, any of that kind of thing you'll get a zero for the assignment or test, whatever that might be with, with, uh, with, I'm sorry, my phone keeps on ringing here with no, no makeup allowed. Okay. Um, and you got to understand that with modern technology, it's very easy to, to catch people doing things like cutting and pasting work. And even if you edit it and make it sound like yours, it's easy to find. And, and you know, I, every semester it happens two, three times. Uh, so you can't really get away with it. So it's really not worth it. In, in this class, it's not designed to be particularly complicated and difficult. Uh, hopefully it, it will enlighten you and, and get you to see the importance of history and get you to engage in it and see yourself in it and see how the world is, is somewhat run by it. Okay, so my, my point is engage in the class and get the most out of it and don't Spend your energy in the right way, not in a negative way of cheating and trying to get over. Okay, um, you know if, if it's if it's real bad, uh, if if the situation is 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 bad, and and I've had them before, you know you'll be reported to the dean of student affairs, and they will determine what kind of punishment. You know, some obviously there's there's cheating rings and there's people buying papers and there's you know people giving paper, people papers from other classes and these types of things. It's not hard to um, 
to catch people doing that. Um, you know, with all the effort you put into doing that, put the effort in, into the right way and, and you'll do fine and hopefully gain something from it. Understand that it's my responsibility to report all those incidents to the Office of Dean of Students. Uh, regarding plagiarism, you know, we talk about it a lot, you hear about it a lot, but I'm not sure if students entirely understand what it is. So just really briefly, plagiarism is essentially using somebody else's work and not giving them credit. <clears throat> So if you've done any kind of writing where you are doing footnotes and you're, you know, that, that type of thing and, and you're, you're um, using somebody's work, uh, that's what a footnote is for. You're essentially telling the writer, yes, I'm writing about this, but where I got this idea came from this, this, this person in this book or this document. So you're, you're giving that person the credit because he or she is the one that did it. If I didn't do a footnote, uh, and claim it's mine, I came up with this, that's plagiarism, okay? So how does that relate to a student? Well, essentially, if you go to the internet and you Google something and you come up and you cop copy and paste something and drop it into your assignment, this is my work, it's not your work, it's somebody else's. So essentially, you're using somebody else's work without giving them credit, okay? That that really isn't what it's about. It's more about cheating, but but plagiarism is, in, in its in its definition form, is that, okay? Uh, so please be aware of that. If you have any questions about any of these types of things, talk to me. Uh, academic accommodations, if you, uh, if you have those types of needs, you need to talk to the Disability Resource Center, the DRC. Uh, they are the, they are the uh, department that determine what your accommodations will be. Um, you know, I don't have the the ability or the expertise to make that call. I just simply go by what they tell me. So if you if you do have specific needs, talk to them. They will then tell me what you need, and I will comply with that. Um, that typically is a letter that you email to me. I sign it and send it back to you. Okay. Okay. So there's the DRC phone number, email, and where to find them. Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay, so just, just to kind of wrap this up, this is kind of my soapbox parental moment. The question is inevitably asked, how much of your lecture presentation is actually on exam? So in our class, there's eight weeks in our course. If we take out the days for the final and midterm, let's call it seven weeks. If we multiply that by six hours of instruction, that's 42 hours of instruction. Uh, the midterm and final will amount to only three hours. So how do I fit 42 hours into three hours? Well, pretty clearly, I can't. So it becomes obvious that getting everything I say to you in an exam is impossible. But students will still ask me, well, what you're about to talk about beyond exam? And I'm not sure what they're asking me. Are you, are, you, are you asking me to let you know when something's important and let you know when something's not? I mean, essentially, it's all important. Um, it's a difficult question for me to answer. Uh, it's all important to me. I'm telling you the story of American history as I know it. Uh, you, you're going to be tested on parts of it, but I'm not going to tell you which parts, obviously. So uh, from my perspective, the best approach for students is take it all in, learn all you can. If you approach it that way, and like I said before, don't worry about you know, put your energy, energy towards doing it the right way, not cheating. You won't have to worry about the exams. You'll know all there is to know. So this course was designed by me to teach you the story of American history. Uh, the best approach for you is to learn it well as it will help you discover that many of the issues and conflicts that we have today have their beginnings in the past. History is an extremely relevant uh, subject regarding the present. Uh, you know, history is seen as, oh, oh gosh, history is boring. Oh, I don't want to take that. The truth is there, there isn't a more vibrant subject in the whole curriculum from my perspective. because it, it tells us exactly about who we are, where we came from. I think that's important that we all know uh, where we came from. The best approach to your education is not to figure out an easy way or take shortcuts, but embrace it, let it do its magic. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I sound like a like a you know, like a parent here, but I'm telling you from from my own experience also that I I, I didn't know this when I was young. If you can learn it young, you're, it will change your life. The combination of all your classes together is designed to enlighten you, to remove any blinders you may be wearing regarding life, open your periphery up. Realize that people have different opinions than you. It's, it's okay. It's a free country. Uh, you don't have to be so judgmental and opinionated when you when you open up your 
your mind a little bit and see that a free country means that anybody can, can state whatever they want as long as they don't hurt anybody or break the law. Um, it, they have the right to their opinion and so do you. So hopefully that's part of the enlightenment process that an education will do for you. If you allow this to happen and work as hard as you can, I can assure you that the benefits game will be invaluable and priceless for the rest of your life. So essentially, high school is like adult training. It teaches you the very basics so one can maneuver through society without any obstacles. We know that there's a post office and there's a White House and we vote for the president and there's, we all can vote and there's a government and there's, you know, Congress and, and all of that. But, but college takes you further. College will allow you to pursue careers that require higher knowledge. Because, because people with college degrees become supervisors and instructors and manage, managers and so on. And all that means what? means more money. Um, so more challenge, uh, more, uh, more money, but also more satis satisfaction. Uh, this will result in living a life that's full of challenging and rewarding, but most importantly, as I just mentioned, it will result in a life that is satisfying the key ingredient to happiness. So if you do something that satisfies you, it doesn't really become about how much money you make. You know, if you're doing something you love, but the money's not great, it will come over time. You know, you'll, you'll find a, a, a way to, to find that. Uh, satisfaction is what it's all about. Okay, if you think education is expensive, then try ignorance. Okay, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you.